Welcome to the Accounting Success Podcast. Ian Wellham is a chartered accountant, helping other CPA firms maximize their profit potential and become the most relevant advisor to clients. To learn how you can add value, introduce new revenue streams, and move into high-value advisory services, simply go to www.haydenrock.com. On the podcast, Ian brings together successful accountants and industry thought leaders to share with you how they serve business owners and how you can too. And now, here is your host, Ian Wellow. Hello, and welcome to the Accounting Success Podcast. I'm really excited to have Peter Riley on the call today. Peter is President and Managing Partner of Council of Buchanan and Mitchell PC, an audit, tax, accounting, and business advisory firm serving clients in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore metropolitan area since 1921. Peter has over 30 years of audit and tax experience and serves as director of the construction and real estate practices. He performs business valuation services and represents the firm in business valuation and litigation matters. In addition, Peter has extensive experience with family-owned operated businesses and co-authored the book, Minding Your Family Owned and Managed Business. In 2015, Peter received the Greater Washington Society of CPAs Outstanding Member in Public Practice Award. Peter, first of all, let me thank you for joining us today. Obviously, you're a busy man, so I appreciate you carving out some time. Ian, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I want to talk about your practice and, of course, some of the interesting things that you're doing with it. But first, Perhaps you could give the listeners a little background about yourself and also about the firm. Sure. Um, well, recently I was voted by my partners to be uh, president and managing partner, and that's clearly the most uh, exciting professional accomplishment of my career. Uh, and doing that, I'm learning that there's a lot more to it than just the title. Uh, but but we're, we're delighted to be celebrating our 95th year. We, we serve the automobile and not-for-profit uh, groups at a very high level and have been doing it for a long time, as well as construction and professional services and how to network individuals. That's great. Um, 95 years, that's quite a track record. Now, um, <clears throat> I also read that uh, CBM has some interesting history. I believe back in 1930, the firm hired Edna Nick, one of the first women to be employed by an accounting firm. She was eventually named a senior partner and enjoyed a 51-year career with the organization. So you've been an institution in the Washington Beltway for decades, right? We, we sure have. The many household names in, in the Washington area have been our clients for generation upon generation. Interesting about Edna, who uh, was here and hired me when I joined the firm, she was, oh, wow. the first woman, she was the first woman to pass the CTA exam in Virginia. Uh, and I, thought, I think she was a woman partner at CBM before women were allowed to be members of the AICPA. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Um, sure. So how about you, Peter? What actually got you into the business? What, what inspired you to you know, become an accountant? Well, I, I, in order to go to college and get assistance from my father, I was going to be an accounting major, and uh, it proved the, the great uh, a, a, a great decision on his part. Uh, I wasn't sure in the beginning, but uh, I, I worked in construction for about two years in accounting for a big national company. I wanted to pass the CPA exam, and that required back then working for a CPA firm for two years. Uh, I started studying on my own, started passing the exam, and came to CBM with the idea of staying here for two years. And, but as a result, it's uh, I've stayed here for over 35 now, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was, he, was your father in it by any chance? No, he was uh, he was international sales. Okay, okay, but clearly he had a gave you some direction, and uh, you uh, you followed it. Absolutely. Uh, it, it was clear to him that with uh, allowing me to, to um, run off on my own, it wasn't a good idea. And something that's uh, grounded in accounting was uh, um, in this concept of making sure I have a job, at least when I graduate. Yeah. Which I yeah. did. Yeah. And uh, what, 
What are the things that uh, you like most about the work that you do? Well, it's evolved now that, you know, I basically have one client. It's Counselor Buchanan Mitchell with 65 employees. Uh, and, and what has always made it attractive and interesting here at TBM is the people themselves. All of them have passion for their clients and learning more. And you know, It can be very difficult, but uh, each day they come in, bring a good fight, and uh, it's a real joy to work with such you know, great people. So that's sort that's of the draw for me and the attraction of what's kept me uh, motivated. Oh, great. How, how many partners do you have? Seven. Seven in the firm. Okay. And um, are you uh, are you uh, how, uh, multi office or, or single office? We uh, recently we obtained a DC office, so we have two offices now. Uh, with the merger of uh, Pat Drolet and her firm, uh, helped strengthen our not for profit uh, expertise. And many of the not for profits are located in DC, steps from our office. So it's uh, it's proven that it's proven to be a great uh, merger. Great. Yeah. Um, so perhaps you could share with us a little bit about the things that you feel that your firm is doing um, especially well. Well, we have a, a um, tremendous commitment I always have had into training younger staff, transitioning, transferring knowledge to these uh, uh, younger people in hopes of getting them to uh, grow quicker and share share the knowledge that we have. So we have a project clear path. Each individual is assigned a mentor. Each individual aligns their personal goals with the firm's goals. And it's specific. And if you're a senior, these are the duties we expect of you, and these are the training courses we expect you to, to take. And it's, uh, it's, being, it's very well received, very helpful with our particular industry niches. And the employees seem to benefit their, their focus on their uh, growth. I see. If there was an area you feel you'd like to improve on, what, what might that be? Um, I think recruiting is, is an area of somewhat of a focus at the moment. We, we're, we're delighted to be hiring as many people as we do, but being a smaller firm, we don't have the benefit of a large HR department going to different colleges and uh, singing our song, but uh, we're going to work on that. Uh, I, I think getting young people out of college and get them into our program and learning the way CBM does it is um, really important. And we use intern programs, and we do visit campuses, but not in the, in to, to the level and uh, hope and desire that I want to see us get to at the moment. Yeah, and do you think that recruiting young talent and keeping young talent is a is that an issue for firms? It, well, it hasn't been for us, but you know, I do read the, the, the regular journals and all, and it seems like recruiting is a is a, um, a major concern. Our concern is with Washington doing so well and has been doing well for the last five years, anyways. Uh, the competition, both in private and public, with our, our staff, they're, they're well trained, they're smart people. And there's economic opportunities today that weren't there five years ago that we're combating uh, on a regular basis. Okay. Well, um, I know that you mentioned your firm specializes in a few different industries. Um, how did you actually get into those industries? Perhaps you could share a little bit. You mentioned the uh, car industry and you've mentioned construction and real estate. Perhaps you'd like to share how that actually came about. Sure. We, we, um, when I started in 1979, CBM did, I think, 15 savings loans in the Washington area, which was a significant number of the savings loans, which there aren't many left anymore, and hospital audits and big manufacturing companies up and down the East Coast. With the roll-ups and then the, uh, you know, the crisis, we don't have any savings loans left. And uh, the hospitals have all been merged out. Yeah. And large broadcasting companies have been sold, you know, to, uh, which we did, that have been, you know, sold to publicly traded companies. 
Well, in the meantime, uh, Tom O'Neill, uh, one of the partners who hired me, he had developed a niche through Ford Motor Company. They were using Tom to uh, assist with training on different tax matters and legal matters protecting the auto industry. And just by his involvement and passion for dealerships, we started gaining more and more uh, auto dealerships. Claire Parsons was very much involved in the not-for-profit industry, and he grew that uh, significantly over uh, through the 80s and 90s. And uh, we can, you know, we continue to to uh, leverage our expertise both in training our staff and in, and in the field, uh, and it and it's and it's working well. It's good to be focused on an area that you can go from one dealership to the next dealership and practice the best practices of each. Um, perhaps we could delve a little bit deeper into when you work with business owners, small, medium, large. How involved do you actually get in their business beyond taxes, financial statements, compliance work? Well, how does how, how do you make yourself a, you know an integral advisor in that business? I think you you have to really work on understanding the makeup of the company, the industry industry it's in, and the management that's making it happen there day to day. Well, I, re- I remember when I first started with the firm, the partners would always ask us when we came back from being in the field auditing, what, what does the company or the not-for-profit do that you just spent a week on? And that question is still asked for every staff that goes out into the field. It's really important to understand them from the inside out. The term I, I use is called economic clarity. So if you're a three-person construction company and you do between four and four and a half million dollars a year and you've been doing that for five years, that's how big you under your current management can be. And that's a place I like to start with my conversation with my private clients. Is is this where you want to be? Do you want to grow? Who's going to take over? What's the transition? So I spend a lot of my time now, probably because I'm old. Uh, in transition management and succession planning with uh, a lot of the private companies here in the Washington area. And no two are alike. Right. No, that's uh, very interesting, and it it aligns with a lot of the things that uh, we at Hayden Rock believe. The idea that if a business doesn't have a clear direction, uh, not all of the management team are on the same page in that respect, it's very difficult to maximize the revenues and grow and, 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 and meet the potential that that business could have. Um, do you come across that issue on a regular basis that, frankly, everybody isn't clear about where they're going? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, but I do love asking that question. I, 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 I think it's fine to talk and it's important to talk about your differences. You know, heaven, <laughs> heaven forbid I try and shove this something down seven people's throats here in my office, my partners, you know. None of them mind letting me know what they think. Uh, and it's important you have that open uh, dialogue. Um, and and it's, it's okay talking about weaknesses. No, no one's perfect, you know. But, that's, but being open and honest about uh, where your management team is, where, where we need to go, you know, you, you'll, you'll get, there'll be buy-in. People will be supportive and want. You know, everyone wants the same goal. No one shows up to, to work wanting to screw up in the morning. Hmm. No, no. Well, the Institute, the AICPA, actually published a report measuring the five-year growth rate in various accounting services. And it actually showed that auditing and accounting services grew just 6%, tax services grew 17%, while advisory consultant uh, services, they grew over 90%. Um, Can you talk a little bit maybe about what services uh, advisory consulting that your firm offers and if you see this as a growth area in your firm? Well, I I think there's not a managing partner in America that isn't clamoring for add-on services to what they do. You know, fortunately for CBM, um, 50% of our, our practice is still auditing. We've always done that, and it's glamorous to us. I mean, we're not out to banging the, the consulting 
uh, drums. How, however, because of our expertise with automotive and not-for-profits and construction, from time to time we're, we're asked, or often we are asked to come in and look at the way the budget's being done for a not-for-profit, for example. Uh, look at the, the profitability of certain divisions of a dealership that other firms wouldn't be able to do without having the intimate knowledge that we do with those particular industries. Uh, so, so just our, our organic consulting growth from our existing clients is there, and it's always been there. We, don't, we used to call it advisory services and what have you, but we, we, we do have some add-on consulting services, directly to your point. We do business evaluations for families that are transitioning to younger owners, meet the IRS standards, or assisting in the sale of a construction company. We also do forensic accounting. We also do uh, outsourced accounting, even bill paying. And that's uh, our, one of our newest services we provide. Uh, we have a great team in there that uh, are taking over the books and records for companies on a monthly basis. And, and it's uh, growing in probably 50% right now, but it's a small part of our practice. And it's something we're looking forward to. So, um Apart from that, which other services are growing fastest? I mean, obviously, at fifty percent, that's that can't, I can't imagine anything else growing faster. But in yeah, that's, 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 it's a small, it's a small base, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, valuations are, we anticipate will be very significant towards the end of the year with the threat of the uh, losing the marketable discount, marketable and uh, minority discounts that have been afforded. Businesses in the past, there's you know there's a threat of litigation with the IRS that this is going to go away um, in 17. If that happens, families are going to want to take advantage of that today. Uh, so I, we think that there's some some growth there. There's some there's some specialized auditing. They're called SOC, where you actually go in and you audit the. Uh, security, the uh, privacy elements of certain systems in place. We're starting down that path. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, and it's uh, and, it, and it's growing and you know that probably grows significantly, but the the, the rate at which it grows is, is not important. It's the, it's the dollar amount because if you start with nothing and you get a job, you need hundred percent, hundred percent. But we see that we see that, that specialty types of auditing, read upon procedures, uh, so much so that we're thinking of referring to our audit group as an insurance group now. So that's uh, that's kind of where we are. That's you, you, interesting. You pick up on uh, obviously auditing is a strength, and you're building on that. But is there also an overall goal to do more in the advisory services area where clients perceive? Um, added value and maybe uh, I don't know maybe the question here is also have you are you a uh, hourly billing or do you have you moved into some kind of uh, value-based billing for some of your services the the consulting services um, is, is more hourly uh, our, our audit fees are primarily fixed so it's it's a that we have to manage the job correctly in order to do well in that. Uh, our automotive groups, we have such an expertise in that. Uh, it's pretty much um, an, an hourly um, endeavor. The, the one growth area we're considering, and we're looking at a, at a firm that does this well, is that instead of looking at preparing your tax return, we're going to look at being your advisor to your assets, whether it's you know an estate plan, whether it's a succession plan, or whether it's wealth management. So they they have a number of people on board that are um, financial advisors, and as a add-on, they do the 1040. Whereas here, we've been compliance first and advisory second. That's an area we're just start, starting to explore. Um, we do have a, a subsidiary that provides advisory services, which is fine. But this this approach is what we're interested in, and I think that's uh, exciting and a possibility for us in the near future. Perhaps you could give us um, an example of a real client, obviously without naming any names, 
you know, something mm-hmm. interesting, an interesting client, uh, what the situation was and what they wanted to accomplish and how you helped them do that. Well, I'll, I'll stay on the succession plan side because it seems like that's what I do the most of. Um, 15 years ago, a small contractor uh, left a big construction company and started uh, his own business. Um, and over 15 years, he's grown into one of the top general contractors in the Washington area. Uh, it, it, tr- tremendous amount of, of growth. Breeds very a lot of interest from the banks and the bonding companies that want to make sure that the financial information is accurate and the ratios are being met. So I was able to meet with the, the banks and the bonding companies over the years, and to the point now where we realize that we need to reward the management team that's helped um, get this contractor to the places today, and then sure that the contractor will continue on in the future with or without him. Uh, very, very interesting, very dynamic, uh, lots of personalities involved, and there are now uh, seven owners, which at one point, well, just a year ago, there, were, there was one owner. And uh, there's this bonus plan with stock uh, coming to these different owners or measured and on an annual basis and if something should happen to the owner, the replacement president has not been identified. Uh, it is not a family member with a term limit. So it's it's very specific. CBN has been a family practice for 95 years, and just being able to parlay with my partners before me taught me has has been uh, rewarding. The example of the client you just gave there. Is a classic, I think, example of an entrepreneur who started a business which does well and it's only doing well while he's there. And what you change there is you made that into an entity which has true value potentially to a buyer or to those other partners wanting to build more equity in that business. I think that, do you think that that's something that a lot of small, medium sized businesses don't understand? I I think I I think they don't understand it. Yes, if they could witness the energy that's now, and not that it wasn't that before, but now that there's there's buy-in, there's actual ownership. Um, but, you know, the, the the board meetings are dynamic and um, and uh, lots of ideas flowing around. It's hard. It's hard to measure that and make someone understand that is not living it, mm. you know, and, and it's funny when, when you do, you, you, there's lot, it, like I said, this economic clarity, you know, you're as big as you, you are and look at your last four years, you're probably been that size because your management team is the same, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a real risk, you know, it's like buying a stock when you bring in a new high paid manager that's going to change your uh, um, dynamic or um, give a ray and a promotion to an internal individual and change their job description. You know, there's 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 accountability that has to go with those things, and right. you have to move quickly on in that in that in those decisions. So, looking at your business clients in general, what do you think that they're looking for from you as a CPA today, and how different is that from maybe five or ten years ago? Um, I, I would say that you know, technology today is, is moving at a rapid pace, and we're trying to stay with it. In fact, I, and I think we're doing a good job of that. So that plays into it a little bit. I, I would say though that you know, client service, which has been the you know the cornerstone of CBM. It's just important today as it, as it was 90 years ago. The people want you to respond to their emails. They want you to make phone calls. They want you to stay out in front of what's happening. Communication, communication. Uh, everyone here is you know, required to provide close personal attention to our clients. We've always done that. And that's the first thing it has to know. 
if you're, if you're communicating with your client, you know, if you're if you're staying up with what's happening, and you make a mistake, and we do, it's easily forgiven rather than uh, you know if you come into a situation where you're where you're you talk to them once a year and and there's no there's no connection there. So I mean we, yeah. we believe in it. So so I mean to move your firm forward, are you feeling that you actually need to be proactive? In reaching out to your clients and being involved with their business rather than re just reacting when they send you an email or give you a phone call. Yeah, that that's uh, that's that spells disaster. Every, and everybody, you know, is it's taught this from the very beginning. So if you're if you're maybe only dealing with accounts receivable, you you should call them a couple times a year and get that connection. You, you learn so much by just taking some of the lunch. Or you get to know what the environment is. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's, um, it, it, and it doesn't come to everyone naturally, especially in accounting. A lot of people would, would rather sit in their office and, and uh, do debits and credits, believe it or not. But, mm -hmm. you know, we're, it's all about client service in our business, no matter what anyone says. And as soon as we start faltering on that, there's big trouble. So, Thinking about the business, uh, the business community, those business owners. Well, what are the sort of most common mistakes you come across, maybe with their business planning or their tax planning? What are the things that you're often having to fix or get a, a you know, ahead of? The well, let's say in construction work environment, oftentimes accounting is an afterthought. Um, so it's it's really disruptive when we have to come in and, and fix things from time to time. Uh, because the owner is the, usually that means they don't have a real interest in the accounting side. They want to sell or build, and uh, it, it they could they may not listen to what you have to say. So there's there's uh, uh, cleanup is a is a pain in the neck for everybody. But you know it's. It's our job to make sure that, that there aren't any regulatory regulatory mistakes made, no matter what kind of conditions they're in. So as soon as they sign up, you know, we we start looking into different states and municipalities and federal regs affecting their industry and make sure that, that in no time they're they're in jeopardy. Um, and then the same with when we provide audits and, and review, it's you know, it's accordance with standards. And that's that's the, you know what we have to be able to do timely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah having having started in the accounting world uh, thirty years ago and with a big four firm, I kind of uh, I kind of remember what it was like then. But between the internet and outsourcing new technologies, the accounting world's really changing dramatically now and rapidly. So yeah. with a firm of your size. How do you deal with those changes? How, how, how are you in position to move with the times? Technology is an amazing efficiency builder, and we we budget and invest. And our most recent is a, is a uh, workflow product that that moves our tax returns around without any paper. So it goes from a preparer to a reviewer and. It's it's all on the screen and in the cloud. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting and dynamic and important and efficient to a lot of people focus on doing uh, debits and credits or on making sure that the rule is being met. Um, absolute belief in um, making that happen. But I, you know what, though? I just I forgot the first part of your question. It was just on technology. No, it was it was really about how how fast the world, the accounting world was changing, and it, it's it's beyond technology. Of course, it's related to the expectations of the client, the uh, the competition, uh, the idea of the the, the compliance factories rather than the individual firms dealing with the returns. So there's a lot of different things, and I was just wondering what was in you know what was you, what was on your radar? Yeah, I think you know staying up 
with technology is absolutely important and, and client first focus because um, it, it's easy to, to lose sight of that that's that's um, um like I, I mentioned I'm a lot of time on that it's, it's really the key and then blending the two you do in the right way is important what, one area we haven't touched on is uh you know our belief in diversity here at CBM. You know, I would say 15 years ago we were pale, male, and stale. Today we have uh, employees from virtually every continent in the world, other than Antarctica. Um, it, it's it's fun. It's a different cultures and blending them, and we're watching everyone interact. I think our clients really enjoy uh, the diversity of the of the staff that come to their offices. And uh, we, we're all really learning from each other, and it's, a, it's an exciting dynamic, something we believe in, and you know, we we walk the walk when it comes to that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very interesting perspective. Um, I, I agree entirely that you can learn a lot from different people and working with different types of people. Um, but again, also in the industry, there's there's there are frankly a lot of people who are nervous about. The changes that are taking place at Hayden Rock, we we love change because it's really an opportunity. Every change is a, a huge opportunity. As you look forward, where do you see the biggest opportunity for, for for your firm or for the or for the accounting industry? Well, with the elections coming up, you know the tax tax code really hasn't changed a lot in, in a long time. I think there's probably. Uh, Going to be some significant changes in the tax law in maybe as early as 17, and I think that's a tremendous amount of uh, big opportunity. And it always, whenever there is change, uh, accountants do benefit. Uh, I believe that's um, probably the biggest opportunity that's going to happen in, in the near term. Um, while we're looking into the insurance services for us, we see that as an opportunity. And also just looking at firms that have niches, or you mentioned you know, the, these consulting services that we don't currently have, is uh, an exciting area, and we're open to that. Uh, and, we're, and we are looking at a few firms that will expand the breadth of um, services, and in one case, even an addition, additional niche. Yeah, no, that sounds like very exciting. That that, yeah. that is definitely a, a, a huge opportunity. Kind of, we're coming more or less towards the end of our interview here and our chat. But if you could go back twenty, twenty-five years, knowing what you know now, what one piece of advice might you have given to your younger self? Well, you know, it was given to me, um, Burns McClendon told me, uh, knowing me as he did, just always be prepared. And that bit of advice, um, I have not always adhered to it as much as perhaps I should have. So it's, uh, it's, it's true, it's, it's a, it, but it's a, and it sounds simple, but it's, uh, it's hard to get be prepared all the time with everything going on. But I think that's a, that's a, yeah, when when you say um, piece of always be, sorry, when you said always be prepared, prepared, all, all, all always be prepared. Specific. Yeah, whether it's for for an upcoming meeting, you know, oh, have a plan B, uh, let's meet with the staff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, excellent. Well, yeah. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever it is going to be, be you know, make sure you're prepared. You know. Well, as we kind of wind down, where where do you see the industry heading as a whole, Peter? Are you, have you got a, a crystal ball you can perhaps help us? There's there's so much you? merger activity. Whether <laughs> no, I sure don't. I do I, I do think you know and that's not and, and brilliant there, but I do think there's going to be some tax law changes within the next two or three years. But uh, there. This reliance on CPAs to be their most trusted advisor uh, comes with uh, being knowledgeable. You're, you're, you're not only trustworthy because you're high ethical standards, you're trustworthy because you know stuff. 
And I think this first for now is, is what we're going to have to continue to uh, um, ensure that our staff are trained and be the, the smart ones in the room. And that, that whatever it might be, we're being open to change. Is, is a continuation of it's going to be success if we if we stay out in front of it in that fashion. Right, All right. Well, Peter, time's just about up. Um, I want to thank Peter Riley, President and Managing Partner of CBM, for being so generous with his time today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Ian. It was a joy to talk to you. If people want to learn a little more about your firm or you, what's the best way to reach you, Peter? Uh, www.cbmcpa.com, that's our website, and I'm at P. Riley, R-E-I-L-L-Y, at cbmcpa.com. Could you just repeat that email address again, please? P. Riley, R-E-I-L-L-Y, at cbmcpa.com. Okay, there you have it. This is Ian Wallam saying goodbye for now. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on the Accounting Success Podcast.